Ever wondered what the inside of your knee looks like? Here's an inside scoop of what actually goes on during a knee arthroscopy. Hi everyone, I'm Hamid, an orthopedic surgeon from Total Orthopedic Care and Surgery and I'm a knee specialist with a special interest in knee preservation surgery. Knee preservation essentially means ways to prolong the longevity and the health of your knee joint and today I'm going to be sharing about a topic that is really close to my heart about knee arthroscopy which is keyhole approaches to do knee preservation surgery. Knee arthroscopy is a very minimally invasive approach to assess the knee joint. Apart from traditional ways of doing knee surgery, which is an open approach where the knee has to be entered through the skin and the tissues beneath it, arthroscopy is essentially a keyhole procedure utilising a small camera that's put in various parts of the knee, firstly to assess the knee. And based on the injury sustained, this arthroscopic approach can be used to fix various problems in the knee. For example, if you have a ligament injury, arthroscopy can be used to do a ligament reconstruction or a repair. Or if you have injuries to your meniscus, which are the shock absorbers of the knee, arthroscopy can also be used to repair or sometimes resect meniscus tissue. In other situations, arthroscopy can also be used to do repair to the cartilage or essentially to do as a diagnostic procedure to find out what really is going on inside the knee. While some patients may require open knee surgery, knee arthroscopy is much more minimally invasive as it doesn't violate the soft tissues of the knee. Therefore, the risk of knee stiffness, infection, pain is much reduced when you go for knee arthroscopy. However, in some situations, it might necessitate that open surgery be undertaken. It is best discussed with your treating physician and surgeon as to the best approach to your knee injuries. Let me share a story of one of my patients that I treated recently. Mr. B is a 52-year-old gentleman who enjoys playing badminton. He's very active. Recently, he came to see me because he couldn't enjoy the sport that he loves because of knee pain. One day when he was playing, he had extreme pain in the inner side of his knee and he, should, he has to stop playing. So upon assessment and getting scans done, we found that he has a tear of the meniscus in the inner side of his knee. As I mentioned earlier, the meniscus is like a shock absorber and it reduces the load on your cartilage which is really important for the knee. Cartilage is a soft covering of the knee. So Mr. B decided that he wanted this fixed because he wanted to go back to his sports. Therefore, we used arthroscopy to assess the issue and we used arthroscopy to repair his meniscus as well. Mr. B is looking forward to getting back to the courts to play badminton with his friends once again once he's completed his rehabilitation and I think he will be able to play badminton for many more years to come. Now, let me take you through what actually goes on during an arthroscopy. So this is a model of the knee joint and when we do arthroscopy, we insert a tiny camera in this aspect of the knee. And when we go in, the first part we see is your kneecap or the patella and we assess the cartilage on the patella and on the articulating surface, what we call the trochlea, where the patella sits on. Once this is done, we bend the knee and we look at the structures inside the knee. And in this model, you can see at the centre of the knee are your cruciate ligaments. At the front, we have the anterior cruciate ligament, otherwise known as the ACL, and at the back, you have the posterior cruciate ligament, otherwise known as the PCL. So we are able to assess these ligaments and their integrity through arthroscopy. And then at the sides, we have the medial, otherwise known as the inner meniscus, the shock absorber, as I mentioned, and the outer meniscus, otherwise known as the lateral meniscus. We are also able to probe and look at the structural integrity of these meniscus to see whether there are any tears or degeneration present in them. Finally, we are also able to assess this blue coloured tissue in the knee. This is known as the cartilage of the knee or the soft covering. This is a very important tissue, in fact, it's the most important tissue in the knee because once damaged, it does not have the ability to heal itself. So once all is done, the surgeon then decides what needs to be done for the knee. Whatever tissue that is damaged, we will proceed to repair it and to restore the function of the knee as much as possible. Allow me to take you through this concept of knee preservation, something that is really close to my heart. A knee preservation approach is similar to taking care of many other organs in our body. For example, if we take care of our heart, we need to look after our blood pressure, we need to look after our heart rate. And similar to the knee, there are many components we need to look after. There are four main components to the knee. Firstly, alignment. Secondly, stability. Third is the shock absorption capability of the knee. And lastly, it's actually the cartilage, which is the covering of the knee itself. In terms of alignment, it can be straight or it can be bow-legged. This affects how much force goes through which compartment of the knee. Many people have various alignments 
As long as the knee is healthy, it doesn't really matter. However, for example, if you have a meniscus tear in the inner side of your knee and you are bow-legged, you're going to be overloading a compartment that's already injured and that might be a problem. The second thing is stability and this is given by the ligaments of the knee. So if you have a ligamentous injury in the knee, if your knee is unstable, you tend to accumulate and overload your knee and that may give rise to a shorter duration where the knee can survive. Thirdly, is the shock absorption which is given by the meniscus. So if you have a meniscus tear, the knee loses its ability to absorb shock very similar to a car needing a change of suspension. And therefore, you might be overloading the cartilage and the cartilage, once it wears out, it can't heal on its own as I mentioned before. So alignment, stability and shock absorption are critical to keep the cartilage healthy and long-lasting and that really determines how long your knee can last. Looking after the knee is not such a difficult task. Let me share a few pointers on how we can look after our knees and ensure that the knees can last a long time. The knee is a mechanical joint which means weight goes through it. So firstly, having a good healthy body weight is important. This can be achieved by having a balanced diet and by ensuring that we have adequate amount of exercise to keep our weight trim. Secondly, the knee is surrounded by muscles. At the front of the knee or the front of the thigh, you have your quadriceps. At the back, you have your hamstrings. In fact, the muscles at the hip joint called the abductors are also an important muscle group to look after for your knee joint. So having strengthening exercises as we age especially is particularly important. This is because without even realising, we lose our muscle mass as we age. So paying particular attention to doing more strength training as we age is very important to keep our knee health going. Thirdly, preventing injury. A lot of us enjoy our sports, however, it is important to know that for whatever sports that we do, it's important to train for it and also to do stretching exercises before and after playing the sport. Lastly, knowing when to seek help is important. Yes, when you have knee pain, you can self-medicate, you can self-treat. A lot of us know the acronym RISE. You rest, you ice, you compress, and you elevate. If your knee pain persists for more than two weeks after you sustain an injury, it is important for you to seek medical help. You can visit an orthopedic surgeon or a sports medicine specialist to have your knees evaluated with a physical examination. Sometimes you might need a scan or x-rays to delineate the problem further. Taking professional advice will be critical to ensure that you do not add further injuries to your knee. Knee surgery is often the last resort when all else has failed. If you have tried physiotherapy, if you have tried pain medication, if you have tried resting and your pain does not get better and you are unable to achieve the quality of life or the function you desire for yourself, seek help from an orthopedic surgeon. Knee arthroscopy may be one of the approaches that may be used as a minimally invasive approach to treat your problem and to ensure that you're able to get the best years of your knee ahead of you. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment and follow us on our social media handles. Thank you very much.